Yeah, I know. I've noticed that the. Um, <laughs> it's on the size of whatever it's to go in the ceramics Because. Kids <laughs> again. What? <laughs> Is a, yeah, it's a normal chrome wheel yeah. well, or the resin drive. But you need something to tell me a bit about where it came from. Who had it before? Oh, this is you, right? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, but very nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, just don't know. And what intrigued me was over here. Yeah. <laughs> And thank you for coming from near and far, quite a lot of people from a long way away, um, and especially to um, George Lanchester's grandson Richard for coming from a long way. <laughs> I mean, normally Chumley goes out to the world, but today the world has come to Chumley. My connection and interest in George <laughs> began in 1965 when I came to live in Chumley, age nine. Um, I knew Steve Lanchester, George's second wife, um, more so because she was my grandmother's best friend and we popped into each other's houses frequently. So that's how I got to know George, although he was very elderly at the time. He was a benevolent um, atmosphere in the house. Um, Steve was a prodigious woman, a fierce and uh, an ex-matron, and she would tell us off after school for eating ice cream and whatnot. Um, but, but I loved her dearly and uh, miss her to this day. Um, I think it was through her as well that I understood the importance of the Lanchester family, and, and which is why we're here today, really. Um, now to thank, so I'd like to thank of only a few people, but over the last 18 months, Chris Clark has um, 
really been a great uh, bolster to me to push this to a fruition and uh, I thank him very much for that and Peter Dunn, our parish clerk, for helping me with the um, planning permission which is um, extraordinarily difficult just to put a circular blue disc on a wall. Um, it's only delayed slightly and it will soon be actually up on the wall. To Sue Croft of the North Devon District Council for her encouragement and generous donation to help with the finances and Kevin Brady whose uh, material you will see in a small exhibition in the town hall um, information and photographs gleaned from uh, when he knew the Manchester household as a child so have a chat to Kevin afterwards well thank you Debbie I have to say she's She's very calm and reserved about all this, and I'd, I'd like to. I know how much work Debbie's done, and uh, it's tremendous. And she's put her hand in her own pocket to finance some of this, and she's a great inspiration for the village. And I, I think she's done so well. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been told I must mention that don't go afterwards, because in the town hall is the. George Lanchester presentation that's been laid out, as well as the special cakes, teas, coffees and all the rest of it. After this little ceremony, make sure you go to the town hall. But anyway, yeah, I'm Chris Clark. I'm a Lanchester historian, proud to be so. And uh, I've been studying the Lanchester Brothers for many a year now. Uh, I started when I was 14, some 20 years ago. And uh, it's a, oh, I don't laugh that much. Uh, it's, a, it's a delight to do it, and we're forever finding out more things about the Lanchester brothers. There were eight in the family, and what prolific family it was. Artists, painters, uh, architects, but really were concerned with the double-decker bus that's coming past. <laughs> Fantastic family, say so eight brothers and sisters, all supreme in their own right, in their own sphere of activity. Frederick Lanchester, as you may know, is regarded as one of the world's geniuses. Over 400 patented inventions, from colour photography to poetry, commended by the Poet Laureate. Uh, anything you want to think of, Frederick Lanchester was involved, normally with his brother George as well. From the first, the very first principles of flight, some eight years before the Wright brothers flew, mo and many people say more important even than the motor vehicle side, which they're generally well known for. And on motor cars, I think it was the auto car that said 48% of all the things on a present motor car were designed by Lanchester. So really prolific family. Uh, I didn't ever meet George, sadly. But I know a lot about him, but I did meet Steve and I came in here many times with my wife Lynn. She actually found our dog, uh, we chose the dog I should say, and what a woman she was. I remember going to the hotel and she said, we'll go there for a meal. And when I thought, well I'm a gentleman, I must pay, and I tried to do it secretly. And then uh, when the waiter came over, she said in her strident voice, where is the bill? I can't do Scottish room. I said, is it actually the gentleman with you has paid? My goodness, he really <laughs> tore into him. It, well, he felt about two foot small of him. <clears throat> A great family and it's lovely to be back here for this plan. So we're here to celebrate Lanchester. Um, one of the things about Lanchester, we, there's books written about it now, which you'll see in the town hall. And we're gradually getting this known. But what we have done is form the Lanchester Trust. Oh, you're not holding the plaque anymore. At the bottom of the, <laughs> uh, of the wall plate, you'll see the Lanchester Trust. And we are in the Lanchester Trust, very proud to help sponsor this blue plaque. And uh, with the other trustees, Eric here and Malcolm somewhere there, the three of us working hard to get this right. Thank you. Yes, Lanchester um, and the Lanchester Brothers are a, <clears throat> a sort of engineering enigma. They've been in the structure of British engineering for, for 60 years, I suppose, from the, when they started. All these cars were actually built by the company when George was in charge. They weren't uh, built when Frank said, so these are really George's cars. But it, they did a lot more than that. 
And what they did principally was they were innovative and they were incredibly skilled in engineering terms. What we really are trying to achieve is recognition of that. I want to do it by getting the name better known uh, and, and put on buildings and uh, perhaps a, a, a monument or a, a, a statue, but also to provide uh, awards and scholarships for people in engineering and in design, not just in the motor engineering, but really to sponsor British engineering and British design innovation, because there's a lack of that. You know, you tend to go, and it's probably soft engineering. I, there's no computer men around, are there? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it nowadays is uh, what I would choose to call soft engineering. We're really interested in innovation, hard engineering, and good design, and we like to sponsor that as best we can with as much as we can. <clears throat> so that's what we're here to do, trying to do, and, and we're getting there, we're getting there. So uh, over the next few years, I hope we'll be able to award a few Lanchester scholarships and a few, uh, uh, but they won't, uh, I don't think they'll be with Microsoft, <laughs> or indeed Apple. <laughs> they'll involve metal. <laughs> now we've got a gentleman to speak to you for a little while. And this fellow's come up on the train, four trains, from West Sussex, Chichester, especially for this event, as, as have the cars, as you can see there, West Sussex, Bristol, South End, North Wales, Herefordshire, well, all over, especially for this event. So we'd like to introduce George Lanchester's grandson, Richard. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming out. Uh, I'm delighted to um, see the progress of the Lanchester Trust because uh, I've noticed, and I'm sure some of you also, that for the last year or two there's been a lot of talk about how Great Britain has a great engineering tradition, but we're in danger of losing it and forgetting about it. And at a time when we can no longer think that forever we can be importing the manufacturers of uh, the far corners of the planet, we need to keep our traditions going. And the other side is to stress the importance of having a broad and connected range of interests because the main feature of the, of the 20th century really was people developing more and more narrow specialisations and drastically losing sight of the big picture. And I think many of the problems that we're beginning to recognise in, in the 21st century are problems where people fail to see the big picture. So these are the main themes of the Lanchester Trust, and I would like to highly commend them for this important viewpoint. They really have caught the spirit of the moment. It's been in the papers very much, and television, radio, news, and discussion programs for the last year or two. We need to rebuild our engineering traditions in the country. So thank you very much for that. And um, it's, it's great to be here again in North Devon. So that's really the main thing I wanted to say, and thank you very much. Okay, so this is it. We are going to... Has anyone seen this? Had a sneaky look yet? That's good. You're all fibbing, I know. Right. So now, this is the plaque. As... Well, this is in the best bureaucratic terms. It's not on the wall. You know, red tape and all that. But we'll pretend it's on the wall. And now Richard would like to unveil the plaque. In all its glory. That's rather grand, isn't it? Can you all read it? Hang on. You want this in? It'll take two seconds. I'm not sure if it's true about that. I don't know. Evening, welcome. Uh, how are you? All fine. Yeah, I'm sitting around past Joe Bonnet. How can we quickly take a jacket off? 